and introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner. He weighed in at 66 kilograms and trains under Johnny Barra Benavides out of Igor MMA with a professional record of 19 wins for 13 defeats. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Alan Super Ali Philpa. And introducing his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. He weighed in at 66.2 kilograms and trains under Pasha Stoiler and Des Meyer at a Southside Training Center with a professional record of eight wins for six defeats. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise for Diego El Pantera Negra Pereira. Join charge of our co main event. with a flying knee, but it's Philpott. He's deep on that body, look how he goes down. Wow, that was an exciting start to what I thought was already gonna be an exciting fight, you know. As I said, Philpott Thank talking you know, non-stop yeah, before this fight. Diego telling me before the fight, I'll do my talking in the cage. He certainly came out and tried to get a highlight finish in the start, but he ends up on his back here with Philpott on top of him. Alan Philpott in a great position, but Diego, he is no stranger. To what he is facing early on in round number one. What a start to our co-main event, my goodness. To be on Nathan Cage's side with Casey O'Neill. King Casey, good to be with you for this one. I'm loving the control that Philpott is keeping on that back arm of Diego. It's making it really hard for Diego to be able to turn into him. He's having to keep a control of one hand at least, so he's not ended up getting hit with big strikes here. You see one land there, what a... Dynamic strike from Alan Philpott to throw that knee up there like that. And he well, lets go and we go to the middle of the uh, middle of the cage here. He's got all the tools in the shed, does Super Ali. You know, both men have fought a who's who. I, I wouldn't be surprised, you know, if this fight goes the distance, but it's gonna be high level all the way through. And you see it in the early stages of this fight as well. It's surprising to me that Philpott wants to grapple, but he's doing well there. He is indeed, and both these guys. We spoke about the bad blood between Aiden Aguilera and Dave Martinez in our main event. We forgot to mention that these guys don't like each other either. And they're showing it here. Absolutely no feeling out process in this co-main event. Both of these men going hell for leather early on in round number one. I think this one's more of a grudge match yes. than the main event is. They have been Philpott's been telling me he's been trying to get this fight for forever. Diego had no idea, he says. He says, this man just keeps mentioning my name. I had no idea who he was. So both of them talking shit before this fight. Yeah. Excuse my language, but they couldn't wait to get their hands on each other. You've seen it in the way in yesterday. Exactly. They were face to face, yeah, so close to each other. It was almost about to happen right there. You could feel the tension building and it's all happening right here in front of us. You can see the dislike for each other. You can see how closely matched it is back and forth with the wrestling. I'm excited to see what happens if they break off and the striking starts going. Yeah, well, let's wait and see. Oh. Down goes Pereira, but a great. He picks out and takes the back of Philpott straight away. And he's right in front of his corner, Pasha Stoiler vocal. Uncle Dez giving his two cents worth a million dollars as well. You know, the fight with Philpott and Justin that we spoke about earlier, he is coming off the loss there and looking to bounce back, but that was his first fight in a while. He said he took a step away from coaching at the gym and got a regular job and was only in the gym when he absolutely had to be for training and he found the love for the sport again. You've seen how hyped up he was this whole week. You can see that he loves the sport again. The fire is back. You can see it with the way he's fighting. I don't know if Diego's ever lost that fire in his life either. So I don't think both so men fighting cases. with some heart and some love for the game right now. He's got a big fan base here at the Southport Sharks, does Alan Philpott. They're well and truly behind him here at the Southport Sharks. But it's Diego Pereira controlling Philpott up against the fence. He can't grab that cage. <laughs> They break and it's center cage for Pereira to the oh, body now it goes super nice early. Nice body shot by Alan Felport just there.
Both men look so confident here in the striking also. This fight's set to determine who will contend for the Eternal Featherweight Championship. You can see when Alan's throwing, he's catching Diego with his second and third strike. I'm loving when he's throwing the combos. He keeps himself in position, throws them fast, and he's landing really well here. No doubt both these men looking to have a shot at that elusive featherweight title. I can't believe that was five minutes already. Five minutes seems like 15, Casey. We oh. will... We won't see it tomorrow night, scheduled between Justin Van Heerden and Khan Offley. No doubt both of those gentlemen, the Springbok in particular, will have eyes on this fight. You've seen that calf kick land heavy for Diego yes. Allen Philpott. Switch stances immediately, which means it hurt. I would like to see Diego go back to that leg again and see how hurt it really is. There it is. Right on cue, Casey. <laughs> We're on fire here in the booth tonight. Uncle Dez imploring Diego to let his hands go. We've seen what damage he can do when he opens up. You know, both men, really good relationships with their coaches. You can hear the coaches talking to them and the, both of them are responding really well, which means they've both had great camps for this fight. Absolutely, and Philpott heavy hips. He landed is, a big strike on his way in just then as well. He did indeed. That's why. <laughs> Cutting you off. I'm too excited for this fight. Who wouldn't be? You and me both, Casey. <laughs> elbow lands for Philpott straight down the middle. He just did a no look elbow whilst talking to the ref. <laughs> well, he was looking at us and talking to Thomas Churchill. There's a massive strike on the ground there for Philpott. <laughs> And you can see he has sliced the ogre open with that sneaky elbow that landed while he was in the full guard of Diego. Spinning elbow lands for Phil Pot again. But Diego's got his hips now, Casey. He's just jumped into a guillotine. It looks tight. It this looks tight. But he's out. I hate when people jump to a guillotine when they're doing well. I know it looks like you're going to get the finish there, but. Keep it standing. You're doing so well in the stand-up. That was a mistake with the fight IQ for Alan Philpott just then. Well, risk versus reward. More reward for Diego. He finds himself in a great position. This is great for Diego. You know, he gets some time to rest from those hard shots. He has the dominant position, and he's the one scoring points. And he didn't even need to work for the takedown. He got given it. So no energy expended for him, and he's getting a break here. Well, let's see what he can do. You'd have to think momentum slightly in favor of Alan Philpott. Diego looking to turn the tables in round two, just over halfway. Diego takes the back fairly easily of Super Ali. He's, he's got, got one hook hand. in. Oh, keeps fishing for under his neck, and he's getting so close time after time. This is dangerous here for Philpott. He's got a full this body is triangle. He's under the chin. Oh, my goodness! Ladies and gentlemen, our referee in charge has called a stop to this fight at 2 minutes 58 seconds of round number 2. Declaring your winner by a submission due to a rear naked choke in the red corner, Diego El Pantana Negra Pereira. Ladies and gentlemen, I am here with your winner and now number one contender in the eternal featherweight division, Diego Pereira. Diego, congratulations my friend on a, an impressive victory over Alan Philpott tonight. Now listen. You continue to be one of the most exciting and unpredictable and dangerous fighters on the Eternal roster. Now, coming into this fight against Alan, there was some back and forth on social media, some heated words at the weigh-in. I was going to ask, was it actually personal or was it more just for business? But I tell you what, by the ending of that fight there, I saw you had some nice words at the end. But tell me your mindset going into this fight. Yeah, like I said, man, I did a few interviews prior to this. Alan is a showman, you know, he knows how to do business. And I think he takes some of it out of that from Conor McGregor too, you know, being an Irishman himself. Uh, he does it well. And, um, you know, the people love it, the people that came here to support him. So, you know, I take nothing from that. I just, I know his game. He wanted to get in my mind, get me off my game. But I didn't engage in none of that, man. I know 
I have one job, and that's to get here and perform. And at the end of the day, it's all business. Well, we're obviously getting the win, the passion overtaking, my friend. You care a lot about this sport. It's very clear about that. But listen, most of your fights are finishes. You love submissions. You've got a couple of knockouts on the record. Tell me, did you have intentions to not let it go to the judges' scorecards tonight? I had zero intentions to go to the judges' scorecard. I, I knew that it was going to be bloody. You know, he's a guy that comes forward. He's got very good striking, sharp at it. Oh, you know, well-rounded guy. He's been at it for a long time. Got some experience. You know, he, he wrestled me a little bit in the first. Um, but yeah, no, I wanted to come here and let it all hang out. If it had to be striking, it was going to be striking on the standing. If he was wrestling me, I was going to wrestle him and vice versa. But I, my game plan was to take him down and uh, work him there. So finish him. Whatever the game plan was, it certainly worked tonight, my friend. And listen, the next fight is for the eternal featherweight title, and it is rumored to be against Justin Van Heerden, an opponent that you faced previously. You getting the better in that fight, winning by a KO victory at Eternal 27. Um, you guys have developed as fighters in, in the years since, but tell me, are you excited for that rematch, and do you have any words for Justin Van Heerden tonight? Yeah, I look forward to that rematch. Um, I mean, uh, I've been doing some work, you know, we, after... That first match we had, he came and joined our team, and we became teammates for a couple of years. He helped me, I helped him. We developed, he had to leave. He's now at a different camp. He's made improvements. It's been a while since that first match. But listen, Justin's out there doing his thing. I'm here doing my thing. If he thinks he's gonna go any different, he's out of his goddamn mind because the Black Panther here to stay, baby. Well, ladies and gentlemen, there you go. An exciting matchup to look forward to in the future. Let's hear it one more time for your winner, Diego Perez. Hey, real quick, everyone. Before I leave, man, thank you everyone for staying and hanging out, coming through to support the show. There is no event. I say this time and time again. There is no event without you, without your support. And that's what thank you very much. And also, real quick, shout out to my sponsors, Gemini Healthy Nutrition, Tic Tac Nutrition, um, The Fight Dietitian. Y'all, you know, my, my, my management team, 110 Athletes. Uh, we out here, man. We're doing work. My team post all their damage. Adam, training with the guys at TFC, Ben Johnston, Nick Capu. We out here, man, we're doing work, and we only getting started, baby. Let's go! Jitsi Club, my bad. I can't forget Jitsi. Shout out to Jitsi, I love y'all, thank you. Jacob Hoyer, ladies and gentlemen.